Well, let's talk about costas for a minute. Costas survived sponge diving along the shores of Tripoli in the old-fashioned way by suiting up in a completely enclosed diving suit. You know, with the you know, Jules Verne's 20,000 leagues under the sea, you know, the whole suit, the helmet, the glass, you know, okay. Completely, uh, yeah, enclosed. And uh, that uh, completely enclosed old-fashioned equipment was attached to a thick air hose, which was run from the mothership so he could breathe inside the suit, diving suit. But Costa went down too far. More than 100 feet, you know, 60 meters. Just one sponge after another, but a little bit deeper, tempting. Yeah, so. Costas developed bubbles on the brain down there from nitrogen narcosis. They pulled them up too fast also. Buckled over, got the bends, and realized he is the Messiah of Yalos in the Dodecanesus, in Elas. Hmm. So, Costas will sit down with a traveler and actually talk to him. And with a dramatic flourish, the Messiah will kindly serve the severely dehydrated survivor, just one glass, but full, of pure water, which the spongers hide in disguised Bombay London gin bottles locked under the counter. Don't just start grabbing that stuff But the coup de gras for the sponge trade was the invention of the synthetic sponge. Synthetic sponges are a lot cheaper. This narrowed the natural sponge market down. Baskets of Venus only for the wealthy women, harem slaves, health freaks. These days, the dry island is haunted with wet dreams where the slowest to adapt have thrived ever since on nothing forever. Consequently, between the two world wars, the population of sponge declined from 27,000 to 9,000. Around this time, Americans and Australians were offered open-door open immigration to all Greeks. So most spongers abandoned the island. Whole families moved to Tarpon Springs, Florida. Other spongers drifted to Rhodes and Athens to find work. Today, depopulated, lonely sponge, 3,000 islanders, and only 50 spongers work on the sponge trade. Long ago are the fabulous years of the golden opulent 1880s. 
when in a single sponge diving season, which is from May to October, a sponge captain could make a lifetime fortune in one summer. When the pristine seabed seemed an inexhaustible sponge phantasmagoria long ago. In the age when Spongebob had exclusive rights, we're talking monopoly power here, protected by the Ottoman Empire, when Yalos was crowded with boats from nearby Ottoman coast, ships laden low in the water with their cargo of luxury fineries for sponge royalty and their sponge kids. Everybody got into sponging on everybody else in the sponge beds. Hard to imagine this sumptuous atmosphere in those golden years when a whole oxen was slow roasted on spits along the quayside for anyone to enjoy. Well, compare that to when the Nazis bombed an occupied sponge during World War II. Therefore, the former mansions, the piece de resistance of Europe, The mansions are now derelict. Roofs caved in. Glass windows blown out by strong Aegean storms. While tufts of grass, thistles, and out-of-control creeper vines climb up from the rotten floorboards. And we scored one of those, Cleo and I, to sleep overnight in. Lucky, huh? Earth and floor. I mean, your garden's right there in the middle of your living room. You wanna, you got an itch? You brush it with a thistle. Be grateful. Yeah, these, these uh, decayed mansions, property deeds, absentee mansions, and forgotten safety boxes in Tarpon Springs, Rhodes, Athens, and Kandahar, Afghanistan. Greeks on Sponge, Daylan, 1968. We are here. Sponges, dirt poor. A sponger with a wife and five children. At most, 25 bucks a month. Earning, earnings from growing vegetables, which they sell in roads, and tending goats and sheep. Sponge has only one remaining sponge boat in Yalos Harbor. The 70-foot-long uh, Athena, which is getting rigged uh, now for the summer sponge diving season in the backwaters of the Aegean. The population continues to dwindle. Uh, as fresh drinking water becomes scarcer, sponge has no beaches, sandy beaches. Tourism is unthinkable. It was on this very dreamy spring day in 1968 that the Carpuzia ah, uh, sailed into the turquoise fjord. Cleopatra and I are oblivious to the antiquity, the reeking antiquity history 
because we're not into the past. We're into fooling around with each other right now. We missed the whole antiquity trip because we dozed off and went to sleep. Yeah, we have no clue about the history of sponge. We are in love. We survived the psychosis of snake. That's about it. Speaking of snake, back in Lindos, Cleopatra's boyfriend Snake slurs a drunken curse. I should have whacked her around more. He sees Earth Man, that chick robbing hippie, that Vietnam fleeing flute freak, the sweet lovebirds escaped my ambush in Rhodes Town and eloped off the island somewhere. I don't know. They got away. Worst of all, Cleo left me her damn dog to water and feed. How pathetic is that? Meanwhile, on the Carpusia, naughty, succulent Cleopatra and I flew around under the sleeping bag on Beknownst to us, our voyage is unprecedented. We are the first non Dorian or Mycenaean humans to ever travel on the sponge vegetable boat. As blissed out baby angels in a dream. We imagine ourselves to be unobserved in the shadows of crates of cabbages, but we are the wet and wild attraction in a bone-dry sponge world. 